I wanted to share some interesting experiences that I have had this year and also you can see the camera is a little bit weird because I'm filming with the action camera just the issue is that my current sitting position I don't have enough distance to use the big lens that we usually use when you're filming in the living room so I'm using the action camera and I hope the volume is okay it's about how I got rejected from all the job applications I did this year and uh, I have had so many interviews, like so many. And it took a long time until one person <laughs> came back to me and told me why I was rejected. middle of May when we started going back to work so like the cases were going down people were allowed to go to work with few limitation and companies some companies started putting back their jobs like vacancies on the market again so I started applying and during that time guys I had so many interviews and I was just getting rejected like like I don't I feel like I've never been that much rejected but at the same time I also feel like I've never had so many I've never had that many interviews before one of the reasons why I feel I got rejected is because I feel like I never do enough research about the company before the interview because obviously there are three interviews you have to go through the first one then maybe wait two weeks for the next and then another week before you go to the to the third and the reason why I don't do research is because I don't do my job application by myself. Uh, I also don't, I don't do CV writing. I don't do, I don't do CV writing. I don't do anything like when it comes to writing about job applications, I don't do nothing like that. I always have like a consultant, somebody that I pay to get everything done. So for the CV writing, for all the documents, just making, preparing, preparing and making sure that I have all the right document. I always pay somebody to do this for me. They're like professionals and I would recommend them because I think, I mean, they people with experience, they hire people and they know what others are looking for. They'll get you things done in, in the, and it, they will really actually get you hired just by making sure that your your CV or, yes, it's, it's, it's just you, you are presented in the, in, the, in the best way possible in that paper. So yeah. And then the job application itself, I don't do it by myself. I don't really select what jobs I apply for. I also always go through a third company that will do that for me. And if you want more details about that, uh, just let me know, then I will share a bit. Because this is really important if you're looking for a job in Germany. There are several companies that will make sure you get hired like this then if you have to do things by yourself because they can directly introduce you to people, to manager, to hiring managers from big companies that they've been working with for a long time. So I always use this. And so what would happen is that I have sent all my information, all my documents and stuff to the company, let me say, beginning of January. Then I went through quarantine. Then I'm like, uh, it's end of May. Then the company calls and you know what? We forward your, or there is this job application, or we want to forward your information to this company, it's doing this and this and that. So my mistake is that I never really take time to analyze, okay, am I interested? What are they really doing? Da, 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 da. <sighs> or maybe sometimes you do, but the information online is not sufficient. And then when you start with the interview, you realize some things that might be, you know, you have to ask yourself, like, do I really want to work for such a company? Yeah, so I would just, I would just respond, yes, I want a job right away, like, just like that, like, right away. Yes, I want to do it, but I wasn't really researching on, oh, what is the company's about? Then an interview comes, oh my goodness, I don't know much, or I'm lost, or I'm not sure, and I just felt like, Sometimes, sometimes things are not even really tough 
that I'm asked, but it's like you I had so much doubt because I didn't inform myself about these companies before or I didn't know about certain things before. So in most cases I made the sec the first interview, the second interview, and then the third. The third interview was always a problem because I think that's what so when I started thinking about, okay, do I seriously want to take up this job or not? Is this right for me? And I started thinking about that after I already had the first two interview. And then the last interview, when I get interviewed, I always showed out like, hmm, in, like I'm also have a lot on my mind when you're thinking if I want to be here or I don't want to be there. And that was, I think, most... I, I think that cost me a lot of job opportunities because I just wish I had always given myself time to inform myself as much as possible and to think about the job position as much as possible before the, this interview process. So that's where I think I made a mistake. And also the lady who, one of the lady who gave me the feedback was like, yes, uh, in your third interview, uh, you didn't look like or you didn't sound like you were certain about working for us. And, and it's true. And I, you know, I understood, I understood that because I knew, because I knew that in that third come, uh, interview was also really in my mind a lot of that is the right decision or the right, the right job for me. I went through several, several, I would say from May up to end of September, I've had about probably 15 interviews. 15 interviews there were so many every single like three times every week I was sitting at home on a Skype like Skype interviews Skype interviews fine one time the very last interview I did and I really wanted that job I wanted it was like my biggest opportunity ever I wanted it, it was like this one I have to get it so I did the first interview, the, the lady, the, the hiring manager was very impressed. Then we even scheduled a personal because then the COVID cases were a little bit down and we were allowed to meet people. Was still positive about us working together. Then the third interview, same thing happened and I was rejected. Now, it's, it's uh, one of those things when you get rejected, you kind of already, no, not even when you get rejected, before you get rejected, you kind of already know you're going to be rejected. From my experience, when somebody wants to hire you, like in my field, you'll be notified, I would say 30 minutes after your interview, you should already get a yes or a no, because things change really fast and they want to send out contracts very fast. And they don't want to get in a process that you sit at home for four weeks waiting for them and start looking for uh, to work for other people. So they always respond. And this I know for sure. It, when If I do an interview, if I get interviewed today, then I don't get a response 30 minutes after the interview. I already know it's over. Like in my field, I already know it's over. So this one I knew like the third interview was way too short, way, way too short. Then, then it, it was scheduled for, I think, an hour and we spoke for like 20 minutes and it was like, oh, so I was like, oh, they are not interested at all. <laughs> they are not interested at all. And, and then it took like, it took like three, three, it took like three weeks. Then the hiring manager called me back and said, you know what, I want to give you feedback. So when the hiring manager called me back, and gave me the feedback. It was, uh, it, you know, it was already over three weeks and she was really nice. She said, I apologize. I hope I'm not messing up your day with this news and stuff. I'm like, no, I'm fine. And then, you know, after three weeks, you're kind of over it. The first thing she said was like, okay, good. We really wanted to work with you. And our first three interviews were really good. Uh, however, the third interview you were not certain, you were doubtful. So that was the first thing she said to me. So for that reason, we really just have to, we really have to, to look for other candidates. And I understood that, and I kind of knew that. I wanted the job so much, but at the same time, I also had my, so many questions if I was 
sometimes you just, you know, you have so many questions in your mind if you're really qualified for a job. I knew that I kind of qualify. I have a PhD, you know, they require that and I could get the job done, but I always doubt myself a bit because I did all my studies here in English and sometimes I always feel like, and I know that my German communication level is not as professional as, as, as people who did their studies uh, in, in German or those who speak the native language. And I also, there are things that I can't really write very well. I always have a normal. I always have um, a little bit. I'm still learning a lot about writing. It's really we have to write text and stuff. Although over the years with my job, these are things you can easily get over because all the e most of important emails, apart from writing short emails to your colleagues, these are always in templates with the company step already on it. But yeah, so the lady said. It has nothing to do with your German level, anything like that, because you're able to fully communicate and understand, which is important. It's just that you didn't have the same positive attitude that you have had before, and you you looked or you sounded a bit doubtful. Now, when it comes to a positive attitude, I always feel like when I do the first interview, I'm really motivated. Second interview, I'm really motivated. Third interview, I also always feel lost. Like, do I have to repeat the same thing that the, <laughs> the person asked me in the first interview? Or do I have to tell new things? Oh, so it's ridiculous. So I'm also usually not sure what to say. But from now, I know that they expect you to be just as solid and say exactly what they have or what you've told them in the first interview. And the second thing, this is the most interesting thing ever. She said, this way only, yeah, only these two reasons. The second thing she said was that, okay, you know, uh, there was some inconsistent in your interview process because the first interview, they asked me about a salary, like what a salary, like uh, what would I would like, like just or how much I would like to earn. And I stated a number. And again, that is really part of me just not being prepared. So I stated a number and they kind of take it right away without any discussion. And then after that, when I was uh, uh, invited to the second interview, I started doing more research and I saw that, oh my goodness, the number that I've stated was way below <laughs> was way be was way below what um, the company is usually paying for this position, and so in the third interview when there was also the like the person from the department where they usually do pay processes and stuff, they were asking again how much you would like to get paid for. So I I now increased some even you know I was more like with the attitude of now I'm going to increase it really high. So maybe we can reduce, we can have a discussion and reduce and meet then to the <laughs> to the range where for their company range for what they pay for these people. So they didn't like the fact that I had just in like two weeks, I changed my idea of how much you should earn. So they came up with the idea of that was inconsistent. And the first number I said was okay, they could pay me that. And the second number, they said it was over the budget. Now, I understand it was over the budget, but I feel like I was, I really feel like it's ridiculous because I feel like if somebody wants to hire you, they would never want to get rid of you just because they said, hi, sorry, they would always say, okay, what if we come down to what? So while I took that and I said, okay, I understand that, looking back, I'm also feeling, I think they just really didn't want to because you would always say, negotiable, are we open to, can we negotiate that or oh, we can't really pay you that maybe we can come down to this this we can afford they didn't even say that they just said nothing and then they call me back and they say we can't employ you because the money you're asking is too high so that's one thing they said about it but i didn't care because their job i knew <laughs> after i do some research something that i hate is to feel like i'm i'm the least paid person in i, I don't want to be getting paid less than everybody else in the company who is doing the same job as, as me. I just don't like that. I, I don't like to have the feeling. So if I research later, 
that the company is paying more, I definitely going to change the number. I'm going to change those numbers. But I've also learned my lesson, and I think in the future it's just important that I do this kind of research at the beginning. And I come up with these numbers at the beginning. Maybe they will be more open for you. To discuss with me, then uh, when I bring it up at the end of the in, like of the third interview for the matter, because I feel like it also shows that you're probably very inconsistent. I don't know. That is how I felt. Um, yeah, the other thing, what else? Those are two main things which I was told why I was uh, rejected. And I think that I had also one interview in the I think somewhere in June where I was rejected. They said, okay, your German was not good. And that I just understood because um, there are some positions that I would have qualified for if I think of my education and also my degrees and stuff, things that I've done in biology. But again, some stuff really require a lot of um, writing. Like maybe if you are the one formulating these email templates and stuff, then uh, I cannot do those stuff just because my German language is not that good. And for that, that I completely understood. But at the end of the day, I don't let those things. Like if somebody say, oh, you do not qualify for this because your German level is not good. I say yes, but if I see another company like um, advertising a similar position, I will still try it. It's just the thing. I will still try it and see their op and hear their opinion. Now, some other reasons that I didn't get from this hiring manager who gave me feedback that I thought was too, you know, around maybe issues that came up as to why I was rejected in some other interviews. I did also apply to apply for some job where I feel like I was definitely underqualified. So there were some jobs that were asking for people with a six years of experience and I had like three years of experience. They interviewed me anyway. So they rejected me based on that my experience is not I need to learn more. And you know, uh, I just need to learn more and experience a lot more in the field before I apply for this job. But I also, you know, I felt like, oh, if if I could have really put up a good game in this interview, I would have gotten a job that requires six years of experience while I had only, because I think there's still a possibility. So that's also to say, if you are looking for a job, I don't look at years of experience. I, as long as I have all the qualification, I would always apply. Because if they're interviewing you, that means they're definitely interested in giving you a job. Yeah, pretty much that was it. Some important lessons for me this year. Why I got rejected from this interviews I've had in so many interviews this year and everything also that I've learned and I just know. Next thing, I need to inform myself a little bit more and I need to just to make sure that I'm very ready for interviews before I even start. If you enjoy this kind of video, give us a like, subscribe to the channel. And I don't know how many people are really watching the channel or that are interested in getting a job in Germany or stuff. If you're interested in that as well, I can throw in the one or two video here and there always about this because I've been applying for jobs for a long time. <laughs> yeah. For, and, and I have some good experiences and I think some tips that might also help if you're interested. See you in our next video. Ciao, ciao, ciao.